Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to round nine of the Super Late Model Regulation Series. Tonight, we take a trip to the Midwest, Walnut Creek Speedway in Michigan, for the penultimate race of the season. I'm Mikey McBlam, your commentator and driver of the Valvoline Green Machine, inching ever so closer to the top of the standings, but running out of time very quickly. Three races ago, we were 18 points back. We lost ground after Desert View, but we gained them back plus some last week. Will it be enough to make a major dent tonight? We'll have to find out as Eddie Crawford's going to lead this band of hooligans to the line. Here we go. Green flags in the air. Let's bring the noise of the Motor City. First three laps are complete. Eddie Crawford leads the way. We have already worked our way up into P12. Getting ready to work on Jesse right here as he's trying to work on the 79 of Tommy Bailey. But yes, we are back two weeks in a row. We're actually getting some stuff done here now. 46 to go in the race. Got a pretty long race, 50 laps. And I honestly thought I wasn't going to really enjoy this racetrack, but I actually kind of do. I think it's kind of fun. It's uh, this little, this front stretch makes things interesting because you carry so much speed into turn one. But what I am, what I'm personally struggling with is turn two. I'm okay. It's like off of three and four. I'm off of four. I'm fine. But two, it's like I'm a little bit nervous to get back to the throttle, mainly because the car is really, really loose. I gotta be really careful about, well, I can't do that. I can't, can't drive it down on the apron there, but I gotta be really careful coming off of two. The car is really loose and has stepped down on me a couple of times in practice. I've tried to make some adjustments for it, but at the same time, this is a very flat racetrack. And it's a little bit tough to get the car to turn. And I figure, like, you know, I'm the type that prefers a, uh, a looser race car over a tighter one anyway. So I thought I'd stick with a little bit of a looser setup. And just kind of just be careful and mindful. Don't hit the apron or the wall. 41 to go. Harry Nelson trying to get that eighth spot back. As we're working... On the 105 of Ricky Cox. Oh, he's shutting that door on us. I'm peeking my nose in there trying to get him. I think I'm going to have to wait for it. Oh, I got him alongside him here. Thought I was going to have to wait for lap traffic to play a little bit of a factor, but I was able to get alongside him there. Now catch it up to Dead Hill. The X8. Oh, man. That was close. I don't know who's in the X8, but... Um, he is pretty, pretty slow. Come off turn number two. Had a good run off two that time. And here you're going to see one of the glitches in the game, unfortunately. There is another 53 car. There is another Eddie Crawford on the track. But, you know, maybe it's not a glitch. Maybe there is another person driving the exact same number with the exact same name. But it's just not as good as Eddie Crawford. It just, I mean, they, like it's the points leader. Maybe that's just the case, but I don't know. It is interesting how he is in here twice. I don't know why he would be in here twice. That's a little bit weird, but. I don't know. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's some bad juju for the, uh, for the points leader. 
Uh, we're going to need some good juju to go our way today. Jessica Robinson, slow off turn number two. I'm not the only one having that problem, apparently. Ooh, don't get up into the 129. Easy. Got to be careful about touching the sides of these race cars as they... That, that could just ruin your entire race. And it wouldn't be so bad if it was like, all right, I'm, I'm sliding, but I can save it. It's really, really hard to save it because the car just literally snaps away from you. It's just disappointing. You know, you think of like, man, games like this, where it's just like, it just, just make some improvements here, make some improvements there. And this would be just almost the perfect racer game, you know, like oval racer game, short tracks. I'm trying like heck to catch up to, ooh, did I get a bump there? I don't think I did. I think the car just kind of stepped out on me on the outside of Margie Brooks. But we're going to go to the inside now. Yeah, like I said, this car is pretty loose and it can step out on me if I'm not careful. I might have got on the, gone on the throttle too hard there. It looked like I got tapped from behind, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think the AI typically do that. But like I said, like, man, just a couple of tweaks, man. Just a few tweaks. It's not like major overhaul. We get to the inside. Samantha Bell take over P5. She gets pinned up behind the lap car. We're now trying to catch up to Kevin Murphy. Sort of catching up to the uh, leader, Eddie Crawford. The other, the real 53 car, we're catching up to him, but he's still almost uh, half a lap ahead of us. But yeah, it's not like major overhaul, you know, differences that have to be made. I should have went to the outside. Should have went to the outside, but that's all right. We still caught up to Kevin Murphy here. But yeah, it's not like, like I said, not a huge... Not huge gains that have to be made with this particular game. Just fix certain things. And then you'd have like a really, really, truly great video game. Yeah. Just unfortunate. You know, this is like just kind of like an obscure title that no one else really plays or really knows about. You got a few people that are playing, but... You know, outside of like maybe 10 people that I know of, no one's really playing this. This kind of like, this kind of title kind of fell into obscurity, which is unfortunate because. Let's, let's be real. NASCAR needs some competition, man. You know, <laughs> get some other racing series going that's not NASCAR and Formula One, you know. Oh, the 116 goes around. Caution will come out. We have worked, worked our way to P4. We're on the outside lane, which is not necessarily what we want because we're pretty loose up. You know, we got a really loose race car, so we're just going to have to mind our tires. Be careful on the start. Here we go. Green flag's back in the air. Not a terrible restart. Tried to tuck it behind Jones. Murphy will have none of it. Contact going into turn number one. Here comes Samantha Bell. We're going to get to the inside of Murphy. Not quite. He's going to shut the door on us. And I think we were three wide with Ned Hill for a second there. And Samantha Bell. Ooh. Kind of came down on the four of Harry Nelson there. But we worked our way back up into P5. I'm going to be real aggressive here to try to catch back up to these guys. Not let Eddie Crawford get too far behind. He loses the lead to the X90 of Chase Jones, new leader. We get around Kevin Murphy. Yeah, like I said, I can, I can carry a lot more speed off of two. It's just I'm so worried about getting loose. I've got a lot more, a lot more uh, track to catch me if I get a little bit sideways off a of four. Versus two, you know, that wall creeps up. I mean, it looks like a lot of space, but that wall creeps up on you fast. Eddie Crawford falls back to third. We got another fight for the lead here. There goes Brian Ramirez. Ramirez, last week's winner in a photo finish to the line. Wish I could have been the uh, victor there, but unfortunately for us, unfortunately for Brian Ramirez, Ramirez caught his second win of the season. We got caught up in a late race caution, unfortunately. Made the car 
tighter than it already was because the car was getting tight in the long run. We're hoping that this one gets tight as Eddie Crawford gets loose and spins into the wall. Caution comes out. Championship implications for the 53 of Eddie Crawford. I wonder if the other, <laughs> I'm wondering, man, did that other 50 car give him some bad juju? I don't know. Here we go. Green flag's back in the air. Hanging tough to the outside of Brian Ramirez. Going to try to tuck in behind him. The X90 at Chase Jones going to stick his nose in there. We're side by side for second. Ooh, slight contact there. Oh, Chase Jones parking the bus. Here comes Samantha Bell challenging. We're going to have to throw it into the corner pretty hard. We get around Chase Jones, pull a slide job. Here comes Samantha Bell. Oh, the crossover move off turn number two. Samantha Bell went wide. We were able to duck our car underneath. We take back over P2. Now chasing down Brian Ramirez with 16 laps to go. I have no idea where Eddie Crawford has fallen back to. I cannot see him in my mirror. And he was starting 10th on the outside lane, so you know that's not a good lane for restarts. Oh, we're right there. Oh, we got to the inside of Brian Ramirez. Gave him a little bit of a tap. Didn't want to pass him like that. I backed off and let him have it. We gotta start to run some clean lines here. Here we go. 14 to go. Ooh. Ramirez a little bit wiggly through turns one and two there. Look into that inside. He's waiting for it. I got a little bit loose off of turn number four. Center of the corner got me a little bit loose there, but here we go side by side Fight for the lead is on Going into turn number three off of turn number four new leader The number eight with 12 laps to go will it go green? Yeah, this car is starting to get really really loose That's all right, it's turning we're going to make it work, but how about that? I wonder if that 50, other 53 car is the other 53 car. That's what happened. The other 53 car caused some bad luck to the uh, to Eddie Crawford there. Ten laps to go. He is nowhere near the top ten. Especially not this Eddie Crawford, but the other Eddie Crawford. There he is. Crawford comes back to fifth. We get to the inside of the X8. Trying to stay off the side of these grace cars. Got to remember. Got to be careful. We go into turns three and off of four. Coming to eight to go at the stripe. Got about a second and a half lead off of Brian Ramirez. I would love for this to go green, but will it? We had a we had a pretty much a caution-filled race last time around at Honeysuckle Grove. Seven to go. Chuck Diaz up ahead of us. We know that the uh, random Rex code can bite you in the butt. Six to go. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to just try to be as clean as possible. We're going to try to make sure that we are not the cause of the caution, but... I don't know. Running around these lap cars is scary. Remember what happened last week? A dominant car towards the end of the race. Although we got to the front really, really quick, but we had a dominant car towards the end of the race there. All it took was that one caution. We got caught up in it. Unfortunately, that made the car tighter than it it was all race long. Couldn't get the car turned down to the bottom. That left it open for Brian Ramirez to take advantage and find himself in victory lane for the second time this season. But it was not... It was not without a hard fight. I fought hard as heck on the outside. 
There's Billy Green and calls of the first caution. They were three wide. I didn't want any of that. I just kind of let Billy grow there. Two to go. Now, this does not follow NASCAR rules. Once the white flag comes out, the next flag does not end the race. There can be a caution on the white flag lap that will cause a reset and another green-white checker. So we're going to hope that everything goes well as we go down the back straightaway for the final time. Eddie Crawford in third, but it's going to be the Valvoline Green Machine that's going to find himself in victory lane for the third time this season. Let's go. All right, guys, so here are the race results for the Super Late Model Series race here at Walnut Creek. Three times, three times, but is it going to be enough? We got our third win of the season here at Walnut Creek. Hard fought one, was not an easy one by any stretch of the margin, and I sat there and waited for the caution to come out. The entire final, like, 10 to 15 laps, I was just waiting for it, but... Luckily, it didn't. We ran green the whole way. Got ourselves our third win. Brian Ramirez comes in second. He was fighting for it for a long time, but we were able to pull away. Eddie Crawford rallied back to third after crashing from, I think he crashed from second. So uh, he somehow managed to pick that 53 car back up and finish in on the podium. Chase Jones in fourth, who led quite a bit of this race before surrendering the lead to Brian Ramirez. And Samantha Bell with a solid top five. So she has improved quite a bit from her uh, not-so-great outing at the previous race. Then we have Ned Hill, Kevin Murphy, Ricky Cox, Harry Nelson, Robbie Collins round out the top ten. Some of the usual suspects. Tommy Bailey just outside of the top ten. Uh, 10 cars finished on the lead lap. Here's the rest of the field. Uh, Tommy Bailey is the first car one lap down. Billy Green second, uh, first car two laps down. Tommy Richardson at three, four. We'll go to the uh, newcomer, John Price. I believe that's a new car. As well as Jared Matthews, because I've never seen another eight car in the race. But uh, Eddie Crawford's got another Eddie Crawford in here. <laughs> Um, who just happened to be in this particular race. I don't know why I didn't see him or didn't notice him earlier. I'm pretty sure post-commentary Mikey said something about it, but I didn't notice it during the race. But yes, another Eddie Crawford has made his way in here. And uh, I'm just going to go with the lore that they just have the exact same name. That's what we're going with. It's just two guys with the exact same name, the exact same car number, Possibly the exact same social security number, but they're two different people from two different timelines. That's what we're going with. Moving on. And here are the point standings after Walnut Creek. It is now down to a five point lead between uh, that Eddie Crawford has over myself. After we get our third win of the season, Brian Ramirez is in third. Just seven points behind me we managed to get I don't, I don't think we gapped him any i think we're still about the same margin i think maybe we might have gapped him by one point I'm not entirely sure uh harry nelson in fourth and samantha bell rounding out the top five like i said it's, it's the usual suspects up here in the top five chase jones kevin murphy ned hill robbie collins and tommy bailey will round out the top 10 and so this will be the second race for uh, Eddie Crawford, uh, the second Eddie Crawford, um, who finishes, he's still 28th in points with 93, uh, Jerry Matthews, 91. Okay, so this isn't his first race, but I'm pretty sure the 230 of John Price, yes, this is his first race. So he's currently sitting P40 in the points. So there you have it, guys. There was the super, lot of, super late model race at Walnut Creek. Five points separating the top two. And we're going into Nashville Fairgrounds. So essentially, this could, uh, this could be one of two things. We could end in a tie. With that would be myself finishing ahead of Eddie Crawford. Like, like we said, if it's one, two. I could win the race, but and gain five points on Eddie Crawford, but it could end in a tie. Now I'm not sure how what the tiebreaker is. If the tiebreaker is most wins, 
that means we got it if not i'm not sure what the tiebreaker is i don't know if it's going to be average finish or you know whatever have you but it's going to be a tall order at the nashville fairgrounds the 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 most difficult track in the race it's just one of those where the the ai are just a little bit op where you can't really do much with them um so the trek up towards the front might be way more challenging than it, it it ever has been of course it has been in certain other racetracks as well but yeah the march up front might, might be tough it might be tough if it's anything like it was in the srx series then that this one's going to be uh this one's going to be a tall order but as usual we're always up for the challenge got ourselves that all important third win to make this gap uh as close as it is but Man, uh, I really wish Eddie Crawford would have. I mean, I, you don't wish bad on anybody, right? But just kind of like, man, if he had wrecked and went back to like seventh or something, I'm like, man, that could give you a little bit more of a of a uh, of a cushion. But you know, nothing's ever easy. You know how it is. Nothing is ever easy. So. Comment down below your hypeness for Nashville Fairgrounds. It's going to be the final race of the Super Late Model Regulation Series. Final race of the year. We're going to try to close it out. Hopefully. Hopefully. Finishing P1. But if we don't, we wind up finishing P2. It's been a great season all around. But, you know, we're, we, we're going for that championship. We're going for the win. So, anyway, guys. If you're as hype as I am, and make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell so you do not miss when this final race comes out. Leave a like on the video, support the series, and I will see you all at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Thanks for watching. We'll be seeing you.